It's time for Tycoons of Small Biz, spotlighting the true backbone of the American economy, the true tycoons of business in America, the owners, founders, and CEOs of small businesses. The show's hosts, Austin Peterson and Landon Mance, are registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation, a broker-dealer, member SIPC, and registered investment advisor. The views expressed by your hosts, Austin and Landon, are not necessarily the views of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Let's lean in as Austin and Landon connect with this week's Tycoons. Good afternoon, Tycoons, and welcome to today's episode of Tycoons of Small Biz. I am your host every week, Austin Peterson, joined by my co-host, Landon Mance from the lovely city of Las Vegas. He's probably sitting in a casino right now, actually, playing a little blackjack. And we are happy to have on the radio program today with us, Brett Farmelo, founder and CEO of Marketers and Turkle. Brett, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. What's up? Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. We're excited to have you. And we uh, we were talking a little bit before the program started. We were supposed to have you back in uh, December, I think it was, and we had a little bit of a scheduling snafu. So we appreciate you being flexible with us and being willing to come back on the show. Yeah, of course. Here we are right in the thick of uh, January where it's nice and cold. I don't know how it is in Las Vegas, but I could, it's wet here in uh, Arizona. Well, yeah, I mean, usually I, I, I broadcast in from a you know casino floor uh, playing uh, – playing the slots, but uh, unfortunately I couldn't make my way down there because uh, the roads are too snowy this morning in Las Vegas. We got, uh, depending on where you're at in the valley, we got uh, about one one to three inches of snow last night. So yeah, it's cr- no, go ahead, Brett. Oh yeah, I know I was saying so the social media feeds, it's about the only thing you're seeing right now is everybody out having snowball fights, building snowmen and uh, scraping snow off their windshields with their uh, sleeves. Yeah, it's crazy. I, uh, I So I've lived in Phoenix for about six years and I've never experienced snow in the valley since I've been here. Um, and I was out driving yesterday when it started to snow a little bit in, in Scottsdale. So it was hail kind of mixed with snow. And so um, first time I experienced it here, but I grew up in Utah. So I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable with with snow. It just was a little bit weird to see uh, here, and then to see same thing on social media. I guess that was on a couple of weeks ago. Nancy Padberg, she lives in the Biltmore area, and she posted some pictures this morning on Instagram of her of her yard with snow on it. So it's a little interesting this time of year for us. Yeah, so uh, excited, Brett, to to learn a little bit more about the two companies that that you founded. Before that, though, we we typically ask our guests to tell us a little bit about themselves personally. So, tell us about your family. Are you married? Do you have kids? Where did you grow up? And kind of how did you get to where you are today? If you're okay with that. Yeah, I'll pack it all in. So, uh, here I am sitting here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Father of three, rocking a minivan every once in a while, rocking a beard. Uh, kids are young. COVID's been crazy. Uh, originally from Sonoma County, uh, which is an hour north of San Francisco. Uh, moved down to Arizona uh, to go to U of A, majored in accounting, graduated from there around 2006. And how I got to here, um, I'll make it long story short, but I think one of the, the biggest uh, events in my life was coming out of school, coming out of U of A, I decided to take a a road trip in an RV and interview people about their career paths. And because I was coming out of school and I had no idea what I really wanted to do with uh, my life. And I figured that asking people who I aspired to be like and how they got uh, to where they are would be a good endeavor. So um, I took a couple cross country road, t- road trips in RVs, interviewed 300 plus people, uh, wrote a book about it, uh, uh, had a great website uh, with it. And that really transformed my life. It, it introduced me to marketing. It introduced me to the passion that is small business, and uh, and now here I am as the CEO of an SEO company called Marketers, and we recently launched a knowledge platform called Turkle. So that's kind of a, in a nutshell, the the roundabout two minutes about me. Yeah, I think that's a cool story. I mean, we certainly share your passion about small business. That's, I mean, that's the whole reason we call our show the Tycoons of Small Biz. Uh, it's something that Landon and I wholeheartedly agree on and believe in, uh, as it being really the driving force behind the economy in our country. And that's, that's who we serve in our practices day to day. And, and it's companies like yours that we love to highlight on this program. 
Yeah, I wouldn't have any any other way. I'm sure you guys too. I mean, small business where it's at, it's uh, I, I'll get myself in trouble if I talk about it too much, but <laughs> just because you know I, I, I'm biased. But um, yeah, the the passion's infectious when you when you think about the small business owners and and trying to recruit other people to be as interested in your business as, as you are about your own. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool space to be in. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, so I just bought an RV last, um, oh, maybe May, April, May. Uh, so I'm in a different stage of life than you are. So my, you know, I'm getting to the point where actually this next fall, all my wife and I will be empty nesters. And so that was the, the whole point reason for buying that is that it gives us an opportunity to go and see the country. And um, we're, we're big believers in serving nonprofits anywhere that we can. And so our, our plan is actually to take some time and go on the road. Obviously we can do this show on the road. I can meet with clients virtually. I did some virtual before, before this really hit, but now essentially all of our clients are comfortable with this virtual platform. And so it, it's opened up an opportunity for me to do kind of what you did, but just in a little different stage of life and for different reasons. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. We've taken it out a few times and spent a lot of time in Oceanside, California and up uh, near Park City, Utah. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting it out on the road a little bit more often uh, after this fall. We could probably devote the next 45 minutes just to talk about RVs. Like <laughs> <laughs> that lifestyle is pretty amazing. And I think the one thing I learned uh, from that road trip is just how amazed I am that you don't have to have a special license to drive an RV. Like, you know, I was, I was like 22 years old driving this RV and the fact that I didn't have to have any training and I could just get behind the wheel scares me every time I hit the road now. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's crazy. I mean, I, I put my 20 year old son behind the wheel of it for the first time a couple of weeks ago. And, and I was nervous. I mean, I was just super nervous, to be honest with you about having him be behind the wheel. He did great. But it's just the little things you don't realize, you know, how long it takes that back end to come around and how wide you need to take the turns. And, and guess what, there is no real rear view mirror, all you're seeing is the bed in the back, you're not seeing the cars behind you. And so you have to get used to that full swing of the head. So yeah, it's, uh, I mean, for me, I grew up in an RV, my grandparents had one while I was growing up. So I've been comfortable with it. But yeah, I couldn't imagine as a 22 year old getting behind an RV, uh, behind the wheel of an RV for the first time. Yeah, 16,000 miles that, that, that uh, makes you comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that's great. So any plans of, of doing something like that with the kids going forward or what's the, what's the thought process there? Uh, you know, we actually, uh, we, maybe in September, we, uh, we rented a Cruise America RV and uh, cruised up to Northern California, surprised my mom for her 60th birthday. So um, that was an adventure. And yeah, I think that uh, that might have to be a, a new tradition. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it, it, there can be downfalls, of course, too. And I don't want to drag the RV conversation out too much <laughs> longer. But, um, you know, putting kids and we've at, we actually have a, a full size golden doodle that goes with us, too. And, you know, those those hallways aren't super wide. And so just trying to get past your full size 80 pound dog or 60 pound dog is is not always easy. But and so you've got there's some adjustments, of course, but uh We've learned a few tricks here and there. We just got a brand new mattress because that's a big deal. Like the mattresses that come in those things, not great. So we just got a new mattress to put in there in the, in the back, you know, master bedroom, if you will, for my wife and I. So cool. Yeah. Awesome. Making some adjustments. All right. So now for the, uh, the business conversation. So Turkle, you got to tell us what, what Turkle is, but you also need to tell us how you came up with that name. Yeah, so Turkle's a knowledge platform. Uh, we create community-driven content featuring expert insights. So uh, basically we are partnered with a variety of different business publications, organizations where we're contributing uh, an article each month to be published on their blog. And those partners are asking Turkle a question and then our community is uh, submitting their answers to be featured in these articles. So that's, uh, that's kind of the rundown with it. Um, we're partnered with, for example, let's just say uh, Tempe Chamber of Commerce, for example, um, taking one locally and, you know, something along the lines of like, hey, what's your best, uh, best marketing tip to get your business more visibility, something like that. We would ask chamber members uh, that question 
and then they would submit their insights to be featured on the Tempe Chamber site. So um, that's kind of the, the rundown with it. It's, it's based off of this premise that, uh, that people all have unique perspectives. And when you combine those unique perspectives into one article, you uh, inevitably will walk away with something unique. So, and then in terms of how we came away or came up with the, uh, the name, <clears throat> It's, uh, it's named with a hat tip to uh, the oral historian Studs Terkel, who I'm not uh, sure if you guys uh, know of, but his legacy was essentially giving voice to the uncelebrated. Um, he wrote over 25 different uh, books that were based on oral histories. Uh, his most famous book was a book called Working, which is people talk about what they do uh, all day and he put that into a book. Um, some of his other good books, um, uh, range from Division Street, which was kind of uh, a look into Chicago and look into racism and how people feel about, you know, uh, things on the different side of the tracks. But in any case, that was his legacy was just taking the average person and average perspective and um, unlocking those insights because we all have unique and amazing things to offer. Um, and so Turkle felt like the right thing to do because very much we're looking to small business owners who may not get a platform all the time to speak and share their share their insights. But man, like small business owners got some crazy tales and uh, some really good tips to share. So Turkle's that platform that allows people to, to share those insights with the benefit of helping build their brand and, and getting published. Yeah, I think that's a really cool thing. I mean, my, my wife is actually a freelance genealogist. So oral histories are a big part of what she believes in. She loves to take oral histories from her parents, for example, or grandparents when they were still alive. And and so it, it's, uh, I think you're right. There, there's every business owner has a perspective that we don't even realize that they have, right? I mean, maybe, I don't know, six or seven episodes ago, I, I made some sort of a comment about how there are certain business owners that we've had on this radio program that I would put up against a Fortune 500 CEO any day of the week, right? Just because it's a small business does not mean that you don't have the same abilities or capabilities as some of these CEOs that are running multi-billion dollar organizations. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and I'm just continuously amazed at some of the stuff that comes through on this platform because you just throw out a question and you, you get 20 different responses. And it's kind of interesting to just see, uh, see what's in everyone's you know, perspective based on their experiences. Yeah. Well, and I guess a follow up to that, you know, we in in our industry and it's not just it's not unique to our industry, but we hear about it a lot in our industry at different conferences that, um, you know, from a marketing standpoint, one of the best things that we can do is to become a thought leader. Right. And I think that that that's probably kind of what you're trying to achieve here is to help turn some of these businesses or business owners into thought leaders in their particular area. Is that fair to say? Yeah, for sure. Because I mean, the, the hardest thing to do as a small business owner or like is just building the momentum. Like, and so basically Tur the inspiration for Turkle came as a result of running marketers and uh, marketers is an SEO company for small business. And we've got a certain criteria that people have got to meet in order for SEO to actually produce a positive ROI. Uh, so I was turning away about nine out of 10 leads uh, that were coming to us because they didn't meet that criteria because it was too early on in their business. And so essentially the challenge in that is how do I build authority? How do I build momentum for, for my business? And that's like very absent from today's opportunities. And so Turkle was a natural outlet for that to say, hey, as a small business owner who's looking to establish thought leadership, quote unquote, how do I do that? And so the best way to do that is rely on, re rely on yourself, rely on your own expertise, rely on your own insights. And, um, you know, you just need an outlet to actually share that stuff. Yeah. Cool. Any thoughts to turn from or add to maybe, uh, you know, the article style to an actual video response type of a, of a deal? Yeah, there's been a couple partners who've requested that um, in, in terms of just saying, hey, like, can we turn on a Zoom or whatever and just have uh, people's video responses? It's a little more complicated from a technical perspective that, you know, like once we're looking to slice and dice it, so we haven't touched that yet, but um, it's it seems like something that people are asking for and, you know, how, how today's environment's naturally progressing. Yeah. Just a thought. That's the last bit of free advice I'm going to give you, Brett. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, All right, I know Landon's Brett, chomping uh, at the bit, so. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know it. Um, you know, I, I think we all have a general understanding of what SEO is, but um, just kind of in, in your own words, you know, talk to us, tell us like what, what is, what is SEO and how do you, how do you utilize it in your, in your business? Yep. Awesome. So SEO is the process of developing more visibility online. So through organic search. So anytime any kind of customer goes to Google or a search engine and types in a query, there's results that pop back up. And so SEO is the process of trying to get into those queries uh, to connect your business with potential customers. And so when you think about what SEO actually is, how do you get into those, those results? The way that we break it down is into three different areas. We break it down into content, digital PR, and technical SEO. Content is very much blog posts, landing pages. It's pieces of content that goes on your website that are designed to target keywords to increase that inbound traffic. Uh, digital PR is essentially building authority so that your content outranks competitors. And then technical SEO ensures that search engines can go to your site, crawl, understand, and index the content that, that exists. And so when you combine those three things together with content, digital PR, and technical SEO, that's essentially, in a nutshell, what SEO actually is. Hmm. Um, so I, I think I, I, I generally understand what, what, what you're saying there. Um, so earlier, you mentioned something about, um, uh, you know, a, a business being mature enough in its life cycle to really get value from what you do. Um, so I, I've got a couple follow-up questions, but I thought first, talk to us about what you meant by that and maybe what kind of, um, what kind of business that you're referring to so that we can just kind of have a general understanding of, you know, what, what businesses would really benefit from, from doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. So that's a great question. And, and that's, uh, so going back to the digital PR aspect. So the whole purpose of digital PR is to build enough authority to outrank a competitor. And so if you look at those top 10 results, those are generally occupied by trustworthy, reputable, authoritative websites. And so if you're just starting out your business, you may not have the type of trust, the authority, the, the reputation that some of those other uh, businesses have. And so the longest part of what SEO and the battle of it is building that credibility and building that foundation to, to grow from. And that just takes a lot of time. Uh, so if you're going to go invest in an SEO company, one of that, the, the biggest battle that we face is kind of like the time that it takes to actually rank for certain keywords. And so what we found is like, you've got to meet a certain level of authority uh, in order to actually say, okay, SEO is really going to take you four to 12 months to produce a positive ROI versus if you're just starting out and you just like your website hasn't launched yet or just launched you know, within the last six months, um, the best thing that you could do is not hire an SEO company, but to build that credibility uh, yourself. So otherwise, the SEO company is going to be the only one that wins in that equation. And that's not a long-term sustainable strategy for, for either side. Yeah, I, I don't claim to be a marketing expert by any stretch of the imagination. I, I was a marketing major um, in school, and I always tell people that I'm so glad that I did that because halfway through my program, I realized that I really wanted nothing, <laughs> nothing to do with it at all. But uh, I mean, marketing is so incredibly uh, important. And I think that um, uh, one thing as, as small business owners, I think uh, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow maybe for, for lack of a better term, because when we when we think about marketing, right, we immediately think, okay, if we invest this, then what, what comes out on the back end? And to think about whatever it is that's going to come out on the back end, to think that that might not happen for four or six or eight or 12 months, I think that that's a pretty big deterrent, especially for those, you know, um, you know those businesses that let's call them in their infancy stage. I mean, they just don't have the time or the resources to kind of wait, wait that out. Yeah, 
I mean, fortunately, there's so many different tools and tactics and platforms that, that people can invest in from a marketing perspective. And it's funny because it's so numbers driven. Um, it, it's very, very data driven. And, and the ROI, if you do the math, can uh, it works itself out. And you could basically do the calculations to, to instead of waiting eight months, you could do that calculation a day to figure out if in eight months that it's actually going to be advantageous. So for businesses who are just starting out, you know, some of the different marketing tactics that might make more sense is paid advertising, like Google ads, social media ads, stuff that's going to drive immediate uh, traffic to the site. And so if you're doing the, the calculations from this, you know, for, for SEO, we'll always run people through a free SEO audit to determine whether or not it's actually going to have a positive ROI. And so the way that that goes down is we'll take a, a set of keywords figure out how often those keywords are actually clicked on per month and then run it through a math equation to say, okay, if you're on the first page for this keyword, uh, the estimated click rate is this, the estimated conversion rate is this. So if you do rank on page one for this keyword, then you can expect to get two leads per month or whatever it is from that given keyword. And then you have this question mark about like, what's the average client actually look for you, look like for you. And you can make some, some good forecast to figure out if, if, uh, digital marketing is going to be something that's that's advantageous. Yeah, interesting. So that that just right as you were saying that th this came to mind. Um, so I'm I'm going to use Austin and I as an example. So Austin and I, uh, we you know when it comes to our new clients, we are exclusively focused on serving private business owners. So for so for for somebody like us that um, you know, we're only looking to get in front of and have conversations with a very select group of people. When it comes to, to SEO, does that work in our favor or does that work against us because we do have a very specific niche that we're focused on? I think the, the more specific, the better, uh, especially when it comes to small businesses. So that's a common question that I get is like, hey, how is a small business supposed to compete online versus like a big business? And the way that you can do it is through what um, in SEO terminology, it's called long tail keywords. So essentially a key phrase that's between five, three to six words. Um, so if it's something that's really, really granular and focused, then you know one of the things that you could do to, I guess, gauge whether or not you're crazy <laughs> is to use some of the data that Google gives you to see if it's actually searched. Um, so if you have this very particular keyword or key phrase that you're looking to rank for uh, that carves out that exact, you know, uh, customer, you could go to something like Google Keyword Planner and that will and type in your keyword to see if it's actually searched uh, a certain amount of times each month. And then you could do that math equation that I was just talking about to say, hey, if if we rank number one or on the first page for this uh, this keyword and it's searched 40 times per month then we know that we'll probably get at least like one lead every three months uh, to help propel uh, the business strategy. And then you can, you know, make deductions from there to say, okay, if we get one lead or one new customer every three months, what do we need to actually sustain ourselves from a business perspective? Yeah. Interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm so fascinated by like SEO and online paid advertising and all that stuff, because it clearly is a good way to, to get exposure, to uh, you know, get new clients, to grow your business, but I, I also am. Um, I think it's as as non marketing people, it's really hard um, to know like what's the right thing to do. Is it Facebook ads? Is it LinkedIn? Is it you know SEO? Is it so I, I just would be curious, you know, how do you, how do you kind of, you know, help your, your clients kind of design a plan or a, a roadmap, if you will, to kind of understand where they are and maybe where they want to go, but like, you know, what's the best path to kind of get them there? Yeah. So I think that there's two things that might be really important. One is just understanding the options. So when it comes to this big overwhelming sea of digital marketing and there's so many different options, like what are the core buckets that stuff actually falls into and what makes the most sense for your business? And so with digital marketing, breaking that down, there's social media, there's paid advertising, there's SEO, and there's email marketing. Essentially, those are the four buckets that stuff can fall into. 
And so then you just deduce it to say, do we have an existing email marketing list? Uh, yes, no, cross that one off the list. Uh, do we have an existing social media presence? How hard is it going to be to actually develop a social media presence when it's this noisy out? You know, maybe cross that one off the list. Then you get down to these two core things, which is pretty much readily available to anyone, which is paid advertising and, and SEO. Um, and those, those two tactics generally work well as levers, meaning that if you're going to start out with an SEO campaign, you're basically start like if you ask Google how long SEO takes, uh, it's usually between around four to 12 months, depending on a variety of factors. But then the question is like, what happens during the first four months? Like if you're not going to get a good ROI on it and that's when paid advertising can work really well is to say, Hey, we're going to start out high on paid advertising. We're going to simultaneously invest in SEO. And gradually, as we see SEO results increase, we're going to decrease paid advertising. And so that's really important uh, when it comes to small business, because Paid advertising, in my opinion, is not a long-term sustainable strategy for a small business. Uh, we used to do paid advertising. We stopped doing it because we saw a lot of small businesses that were running campaigns for get less and less profitable until it was break even and then eventually losing money because the keywords that people bid on just get more and more expensive. It doesn't really go backwards because you have more advertisers who are bidding on those keywords and driving up the cost per click. And so if you're running a, a successful campaign today in 2021 and 2023, what's that look like? You know, so um, I think it's really important to develop some sort of sustainable strategy for, for a small business, whether that's SEO or, uh, or social. So <clears throat> I like a couple of things that you've said already, to be honest with you. And I've, as you can imagine, met quite a few SEO people over the years, um, there are a lot of them, right? And, and what I found is that m most of them don't really know what they're doing and aren't providing a, a, a good return for their clients. Um, and one of the things that actually was recurring early on when I was getting involved in SEO and, and trying to, uh, you know, use it for my businesses and, and those sorts of things was early on, I would get the response, well, there, I mean, you can't really measure an ROI. I mean, we're, we're here to build your brand, not provide you with leads. Like I literally had that response from multiple SEO companies. Cause just like Landon said earlier, if I'm going to spend whatever easy math, a thousand dollars a month for this, then I know I'm spending $12,000 a year, but as a business owner, I should feel pretty comfortable saying that I'm going to get a three X return on that. So if I'm going to, if I'm going to spend 12,000 bucks, I need to be able to make $36,000 to make it worth it for me as a business owner. And most of the guys early on didn't understand that. So what, what's your response to guys who are <laughs> operating firms like that? And I mean, I, I just really like the fact that you're talking in terms that business owners use and think about. Yeah. So I guess in general, it's, it's tough for SEO companies to promise leads when that's not something that there's a lot of control over. I guess right. the, the better conversation to have is around what's the process that gets you to that, that lead amount that you're looking for. So if, you know, for example, if a client comes to us and says, Hey, we need 20 leads, then it's not necessarily, okay, we'll try to get you 20 leads. It's like, how do we get 20 leads? Well, we need to increase your web traffic to 3,000 visits, visits a month, and knowing if we get it to 3,000, then there'll be a 2% conversion rate that gets you to the 20 leads. Um, I'm not sure if that math is exactly correct, but, um, but then, it's, then it's a matter of how do we get to 3,000 visits? And to get there, you have to increase the authority so that one of these keywords that's searched 20,000 times a month ranks on page one, and then you get to that end result. So from an SEO company standpoint, you know, it's just a more collaborative conversation to figure out what does success look like from the business perspective, and then what can a marketing agency actually do to to support that objective? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I I'm with you on you know, you're not going to guarantee a certain number of leads. I mean, there are companies out there that will guarantee you a certain amount per of leads, and they'll charge you per lead. Which, I mean, in our business, that it does you're not getting quality leads when you do it that way. Right. And so, you know, in a lot of other businesses that may work, right. Whether it's plumbing or tile repair or, you know, whatever that, that may work just fine. But 
Um, for something that's a little bit more professional or as a, as a service, maybe it's, uh, I think the, the direction that you take a business makes a whole lot of sense, right? Because you're figuring out how to solve that problem, not just, oh, that's how many leads you need. Okay, well, we're going to charge you X to get that number of leads. It's, it's just a completely different solution, I think, and process that you go through, it sounds like. Yeah, for sure. And uh, Landon, I was going to go back to the second thing that I was going to recommend um, for the confusion that is like, how do I select the right vendor and the right help? And what do I, how do I know what to do? And I think that there's also value in just talking with multiple companies. There's over 15,000 marketing agencies in the U.S. alone, which means that there's more marketing agencies within a mile radius of where we're sitting right now than coffee shops. And so you have the opportunity to have a lot of different conversations with people and figure out the right approach. And basically, it's just like a gut check at the end of the day. Do, do I trust what this person is actually saying to me? Does it make business sense to say, okay, can I follow and connect the dots? And I can, can I foresee success in going with this person? Because uh, there's no harm in like talking with multiple vendors and figuring out how people do things and, and, uh, and how it can make an impact on the business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, speaking of, of that, no harm, you, uh, you mentioned something earlier that I, I just wanted to highlight, you know, real quick and make sure I heard you correctly. So for a potential client or customer of yours, uh, did you say that you guys actually will do a complimentary, I think you called it an SEO audit? Yep. Yeah. So we've got to do that. Cause again, like at the end of the day, we got to make sure we're entering into a relationship that's going to be long-term successful and it's going to cause more disruption and harm to our business if we accept clients just to accept clients. So we've got to do the math on our end to say, hey, you meet, you meet this criteria and we're confident in our ability to actually drive results. Yeah, yeah. I think that um, that's that's super important and I think that's, that's, uh, that's great. Talk to us a little bit more about that just for a second so that... Uh, Maybe you can just talk about, you know, what, what does that look like? You know, what is a, what does a company get from this SEO audit? And then um, what was my follow-up question? Um, How do they access it? No. Uh, well, talk to us about that for a second, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully the other question will come back to me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So uh, there's a couple of things we're looking at in the SEO audit. The, the main thing is we're trying to answer the question, is SEO going to be profitable for you? Um, and the way that we determine that is we'll take a look at a variety of keywords. So we'll basically say, hey, here's this keyword, this keyword, and this keyword. This is a good example of what a standard month looks like with an SEO campaign. And we'll mathematically say, here's the search volume. Here's the expected click rate on a page one. Here's the expected conversion rate. Here's the level of difficulty that uh, is associated with this keyword. Now taking all of those numbers into equation, how many leads can I actually expect if we ranked for this keyword? Um, from there, we're taking a look at competitors to say, okay, who occupies the space for this keyword? And how, do you, how does your website stack up against those other competitors? And so when you're taking into consideration the keyword analysis with a competitive analysis, you're pretty clearly able to see what are the gaps that need to, to um, shorten up in order for you to compete. So there's, a, and then from when you, when you have some of those insights, you're able to pair that with the content, with the digital PR and with technical SEO to say, hey, here's the combination I need to actually um, drive success. And when taken in to those fees to, uh, into consideration, are we gonna have a positive result from this? So I think that if anyone's looking to do like their own SEO audit, um, there's a variety of tools out there that enable you to do that, but I think that it's just taking that kind of format to say, if we were to wave the magic wand on Google, what kind of keywords would we rank for? Uh, who are some of the two to three competitors that we're always up against? And then how do we stack up to those people and how do we reduce that gap? Yeah, well, you, you said, sorry, Austin, let me just ask one, one no, last no, question. I'll, I'll serve it back to you. Now you said something that made me remember my question. So you said, uh, you know, the fees that you, that you charge obviously make, you know, financial sense based on your, you know, assessment. So just help us understand, you know, just ball, ballpark, you know, if somebody 
you know, you do an SEO audit for a company, you see that you can certainly provide value to, to them in that regard. You know, how do you guys, you know, charge just, you know, generally is fine. Yeah. Well, we've got three packages that we rock with. We've got a starter package, a standard package, and then our premium package. Um, most people are within our starter or standard, and that's fifteen hundred for fifteen hundred a month for the starter package and twenty five hundred a month for the standard package. And again, that includes content and includes digital PR and then the technical SEO element. When you say it includes content, what, what do you mean by that exactly? Yeah, so the content are it's pieces of uh, basically blog posts, landing pages that are targeting keywords to increase that inbound traffic. And so with our starter or standard package, we're producing uh, for our standard weekly content. And then for our starter package, uh, two pieces of content per month. And each one of those is designed to get better visibility for, uh, for a target keyword, but also the secondary keywords that might be associated with that, that main one. All right, so I gotta ask you, a potentially uh, dumb question in inside of a real world example. Um, so Landon and I are in the process of merging our two practices together and we'll have a new name that, that will be new to each of us. Right. Um, and so that means of course, a new website. And so I guess the, the crux of my question is, does the time that a website has been live have any impact on SEO or is it just the, the keywords in there plus the fact that, you know, even though this is a new entity, we've got 30 plus years combined experience in doing what we do. Yeah. So it has a big impact because again, it goes back to the earlier comment that I made about that a business has to pr prove that it's trustworthy, that it has expertise, it has authority within a given space. And so if you enter in with a new domain, then essentially you're entering in with a blank canvas in terms of search engine reputation. So your goal in that scenario is to say, how do we establish expertise and trust and authority for this particular domain within X vertical? And so if you're a brand new domain, that's difficult because you're a new entrant. Uh, the thing that you guys can do that you have going for you is you have two different domains that if, you're, if you basically set up uh, what's called a 301 redirect, which is essentially pointing all traffic from the previous domain over, over to your new one, then search engine crawlers will recognize that when they look to access the old domain, they'll get pointed to the new domain and essentially pass along some of that, uh, that authority to the, new, uh, to the new website. So there's a, there's a couple things. We have this domain migration checklist on, on our site. Um, it's a 17-step <clears throat> type of domain uh, migration to do to help pass along that value uh, through search engines. So anytime you're doing something like that, there's a, there's a quick checklist to, to walk through before uh, when you execute that. Okay. Yeah. That's good to hear. I feel like you punched me in the face and then you picked me up. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not I like, was like, Oh yeah. crap. <laughs> Cause it's not like starting over, you know, it's not like you guys are starting fresh. It's like, no, we're just merging together. And that that's a pretty common thing. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Good. Brett. Sorry, I, I I have to jump in. What the heck is a search engine crawler? Yeah. So the way that search engines work is essentially they have a bunch of uh, spiders or bots that will crawl every page on the internet and access every word that exists on the internet. So a crawl is essentially if you just released a bunch of you know uh, bots to go discover what exists online. And they, and that, that they use that to, um, I don't know, they use that for ranking and marketing and sales and data. Put it, put it this above, way. I'm assuming. Put it this way. So Google is like the world's largest librarian and, or the, the, the world's largest library. So they, their whole goal is to organize the world's information and to make it useful to someone in one search. And so a crawler could just be a librarian. It's like walking into a library and saying, hey, I'm interested in learning about this subject. Can you go find it for me? And the librarian will go back and they'll walk you to the, the aisle and show you the books. That's essentially what a crawler is. Got it. Except nowadays, uh, it doesn't end there. A librarian now will follow you to your social media platforms and follow you here and follow you there and listen to what you're saying. And 
So just to, yeah, okay, got it. That's helpful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so like if I were to say something on this recording that'll later be on the internet that talks about the beard oil that Brett uses compared <laughs> to the beard oil that Landon uses, you know, both of you guys are going to see advertisements for beard oil. <sighs> Sorry. As, I don't use, as I, you'll see one for two days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. But after this conversation, I will probably see ads for toupees or hair implants or <laughs> yes, <laughs> you are correct. All right. So let's, uh, let's move on and, and just get some advice from you for uh, some small business owners. So some of the ones that you said that just don't fit, you know, they're not even ready for your startup plan. Website's not there. Like what can a business do to build momentum? And I, I have a feeling it's going to be something to do with Turkle and some other things that, uh, that they can do. Yeah. So I think that, I think it's given some thought about the long-term strategy from like a sales and marketing perspective. Cause like, if I think about how marketers got our start, you know, I was a freelancer for four years and I got our website to rank on the first page for the term digital marketing company. And since then, that was five years ago. And I know that pretty much every month we're going to get at least one to two new customers as a result of that search ranking. And so SEO has been like the long-term sustainable marketing strategy for us to help fuel, fuel growth. And so if you're thinking about that as a potential avenue, it's a long-term investment that, that needs like some serious thought and consideration to. And so if that's an angle that you're thinking about, hey, that makes sense for, for our business, then I would say that something like Turkle is a good way to get started in terms of building authority and building recognition. So uh, with that shameless plug, you know, go to turkle.io, go answer some questions, get published, see if it fits and um, get started on that, that, um, that regard. The other stuff that you could do from just from an SEO perspective is take inventory and take an audit of just like some of the existing partnerships and relationships that exist within your business and to try to look through, uh, look for like some, some co-op marketing initiatives. So for example, if you're a financial expert and I'm an SEO expert, is there any kind of area where we can contribute our expertise to each other's sites? So if I'm gonna be speaking about like financial SEO, can you contribute some financial knowledge and can we like co-author an article or can you uh, submit a, a guest article that I could feature on my site? So. Take an inventory about the people who are invested in your own business success is another good way to, to help build some authority up on it. Um, but then, you know, just to get started on the digital marketing side of things, I think paid advertising is, a, is another thing that's worth looking into. Google knows that. Uh, Facebook kind of knows that. But Google more so where they really su support small business, at least to try to get them hooked from a Google Ads perspective. And will oftentimes give away like $100 free in Google Ad credit just so you can get started. But going back to Landon, your comment earlier about like, hey, that very specific keyword uh, that we're looking to, to focus on, um, sometimes it doesn't cost a small business very much to advertise for that, especially when there's low competition and low interest in that space. So um, I think that paid ads are another good way to, to at least establish some momentum and, and get a feel or feeler for whether or not marketing will work. Yeah. So... Now I just now I just uh, had the same thing happen to me that happened to Landon earlier. I lost my train of thought there. Um, yeah, Landon, go ahead. Yeah, I can't think of what I was going to say. That's it's funny that that happened, uh, Brett. Austin and I were literally having a conversation offline before the show around this exact topic of forgetting what we're talking about. And Austin, you know, we're trying to figure out is it because you know, we're just getting older or we just have too much going on or what, or what the deal is. So I think it's, yeah, Tuesday at two. I mean, it's uh it's, that's a pretty standard thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, as we kind of start to push up against time, um, this has been, this has been a great conversation. I think this is super, super important information uh, to be sharing with, with, with private business owners because, Again, like I said earlier, I, I just feel like there's so many, there's so many questions and so much uncertainty around this area with with business owners because we're not marketing experts and most of us are certainly not digital, you know, uh, 
marketing expert. So I think you've helped to, you know, provide a lot of clarity there, which is which is awesome and much appreciated. So as we kind of spend the last you know few minutes with you, um, is there something that you think would be really valuable to to share with you know our audience, which is mostly private business owners? Um, you know, we didn't talk really that much about kind of, you know, what publishers can do to generate content ideas. So if you think that's important, let's talk about that. If not, is there something else you think is worth sharing before we kind of wrap up? Yeah. So going back to Austin's question too, about like, Hey, where, where does a small business just even start uh, with this? You know, because you go to Turkle, answer questions, whatever. But with, uh, I think the thing I would throw out there is Google my business it's a free, because uh, most small businesses are looking to develop visibility on the local level. They want to connect with people in their service area or whatever. Um, and Google My Business is essentially Google's way to help small businesses get that visibility. Because I think that as we continue to progress um, in search engine result pages, you're going to see larger and larger brands kind of occupy the organic results. And Google has carved out the the, uh, the map listings or the local listings is a way for small businesses to still get that visibility and to diversify what that result page actually looks like. And so the way that Google My Business listings and the local uh, pack works is you are able to rank your small business based off of a couple things. Uh, one is relevance, two is distance, and three is prominence. And so distance, pretty self-explanatory. How close is your business to where the search is actually being conducted. So there's that. So making sure that you actually have a Google My Business profile with an address that's in there. Uh, you also have relevance, which is really where most small business owners have the biggest opportunity is essentially filling out their profile with every relevant service that they have, all the information about their business so that Google can rely on that result to actually appear in the map listings. And then prominence is essentially um, a lot of the stuff that we've covered in this show in terms of developing up that expertise, authority, and trust when it comes to, to your business. So as, as a call to action for this, I would say that every small business owner listening should at the very least make sure that they have a Google My Business profile and to make sure that it's relevant, uh, the distance aspect is, is figured out, and that you're, you have some sort of game plan to help establish your prominence online. Yeah, really good yeah. points. I'll, I'll just mention... Uh, something that came to mind as you were saying that uh, you, you mentioned distance and in the line of work that Austin and I are in um, it, it's it's difficult to differentiate yourself so you said there's 15,000 digital marketing agencies well we, we've got you crushed there I think there's 350,000 quote unquote, financial advisors in the United States. So uh, differentiation is, is really um, a tough thing. And they, they did a study, Brett. And uh, I, I, I think that the results of the study were that when people were trying to find a financial advisor online, the most uh, common uh, you know, Google entry was financial advisor followed by their zip code. So <laughs> that's just a, a testament to uh, how, how difficult it is to you know, differentiate yourself in our, our line of work. And I just wanted to make mention to that because you, you uh, were just kind of you know, explaining how that works. Yeah, sounds like a super competitive market. Yeah. So it sounds like we made a stupid decision in what we decided to do for a living, but uh, we, we've, we've made it work. Uh, I tell you what, I do remember my question and it's pretty quick. So I know we're up against time here, but I, I did want to just uh, ask this. So I, I've read recently a fair amount about uh, simplifying websites, right? Because a lot of times you, you put just a bunch of content on a website, you want to really seem like a thought leader. And so, you know, fewer pages, less information, but how does that, how do you um, reconcile that, I guess, with SEO, right? And, and making sure that you have the right keywords on there that drive that traffic. Yeah, it kind of just depends on the, the type of page that, that you're looking to publish information on. So by nature, a blog post can be a little more lengthy because it's, it's more research heavy. It could be longer. 
So if you have something like a customer FAQ or some sort of like uh, secondary keyword that you're looking to target, a blog post is a really good way to go in depth and, and create some information about that. Versus if you are, you know, a, a digital marketing company and you have your homepage targeted towards that, that keyword, it could be a little shorter because that's your main centralized keyword uh, that won't rank through like a blog post, but you have your, your, your centralized domain and, and homepage that could have a better uh, uh, likelihood to rank for that, that keyword. Hmm. Yeah, I've got, I've got so many more questions. We'll certainly have to connect offline because I, there's just my mind. I didn't study marketing as my undergrad, by the way, I studied French, you know, what any smart financial advisor would study as their undergrad. Um, but the, the, my mind actually thinks about marketing from a, a lot of, well, from a lot of different aspects. Right. And so everything that I, that I think about is about how that will actually help to market my business, Landon's business, you know? And so I I'm thinking about it constantly, but uh, there's so much noise out there that I think, you know, you, you truly do have to have a trusted advisor, just like in a lot of things to, to guide you in that. Yeah. So the thing I'm taking away from our conversation is I was the only, I'm, I'm the only person who majored in a, a financial related topic here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have an MBA, but yes, my undergrad is in uh, is in uh, French. Yep. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brett, for being on the program. We really enjoyed the conversation. We want to give you the last word here to kind of give uh, you know the Turkle email, or excuse me, not email, website address again, marketers, any way that you want uh, potential customers to get in contact with you. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. Uh, Turkle is turkle.io. Uh, and then marketers, you can Google digital marketing company and you should see marketers somewhere on the, on the uh, first page of search results. So you can find us that way. Great. Well, thanks again. I, I, I really appreciate it. I think it's somebody or you're somebody that we'd love to have on the program again in the future. I think that we've just kind of scratched the surface on what it is that you do for small business owners. And we, we appreciate your dedication to this marketplace. Yeah, for sure. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. You're yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Brett. Don't hold your breath, guys, all right? <laughs> I sure hope Karen's there and ready to hit the the uh, outro music. Dates throughout the country. Join Austin, Landon, and the Featured Tycoons live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Business Radio X and your favorite podcast platform.